Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting on March 19th, 2018. Uh, we are going to start with the oath of office, swearing in of Robert Delato, full-time police officer. Mr. Chairman, thank you again for taking this, giving us this opportunity to do this in public. It is a good, uh, I think it's a good idea for us to do this uh, at the meeting so the public does get to see who our officers are and uh, bringing the new faces into the department, taking us forward. So. I'd ask Robert Delato of the third, a Hampton resident, to step forward to be sworn in. Pretty good. Al Clerk Jane Seifel is next to the oath. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Robert C. Delato, Hampton, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full-time police officer in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Robert C. Delato, as full-time police officer of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until, to, until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 19th day of March, 2018, Fred Welch, town manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Robert C. Delato. I, Robert C. Delato. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a full-time police officer. As a full-time police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Right there and there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'd ask uh, Officer Delato's father, Robert Delato, to step forward to pin the badge on. Drive her in as hard as you can. It's okay to drop, <laughs> bud. <laughs> <laughs> She kept you up waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Push it right through. He's wearing his nasty spine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. I would ask anybody that was here for uh, Robert swearing in, we're going to move upstairs. The board has a busy agenda, and we don't want to keep the crowd here too long. So if you're here for Robert swearing in, we're moving upstairs in the lobby for pictures. All right, we'll give you a minute to clear out. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, oath of office, swearing in of elected officials, town of Hampton elected officials. Okay, we'll start with selectmen. Mm. As you get out of your chair. All right. So, Mayor Louise. Starting from your first budget. Sorry about that. Getting 
please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Mary Louise Wolsey. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly, solemnly swear. swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear, bear faith and true allegiance, allegiance to the United States of America. To the United, United States, States of America, America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof. And, and will support, support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly and sincerely. I do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me, all, all the duties incumbent upon me, as selectman, as selectman, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jane. I just need your signature. Bring, bring down more than one pen. I, I failed. One. I failed this evening. Sounds good, frugal, Jane. You can't afford a whole bunch of pens. Thank you, Nadia. All set? Mm hmm. And moderator Robert Casaza. Thank you. I don't have to give you any instructions, do I? <laughs> I, Robert A. Casaza. I, Robert A. Casaza. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Robert A. Casaza. I, Robert A. Casaza. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As moderator. As moderator. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Supervisor of the checklist, Nancy Stiles. One by write in campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Nancy Stiles. I, Nancy Stiles. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Nancy Stiles. I, Nancy Stiles. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a supervisor of the checklist. As a supervisor of the checklist. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Which place? Both, Both places, there. please. Okay, trustee of the trust funds. We have Nancy Andrew and John Bletzer. Come on up. Good time. Come on up. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Where do I stand? That's good. I came from the gym. If <laughs> I can have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Hi, John Bletzer. Nancy G. Andrew. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. I will bear, bear faith, faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. To the United, United States, States of America. America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions 
Stacey Dero. So help me God. So, so help, help me us God. God. Yeah, so help me God. I Stacey Main. I John Blesser. I'm Nancy Andrews. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. We can do it together. <laughs> that I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully, faithfully and, and impartially. impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All, All the duties incumbent upon me. As a trustee of the trust fund. As, as a trustee of the trust, trust fund. According to the best of my abilities. According, according to the best of my abilities. abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeable to, to the rules and regulations. regulations of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws, and the laws of the state, state of New Hampshire. Hampshire. So help me God. So, so help, help me God. God. Congratulations. <laughs> So both spots, please. Oh, just those two. Yep, thank you. So much. Congratulations. Okay, library trustees, J.F. Lurie and Elizabeth Kerouac. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Elizabeth Kerouac. I, J. Shriatamuni. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States, States of America. America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I, Elizabeth Carroy. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a library trustee. As a library trustee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so there and there, please. Thank you. Cemetery trustee Mary Blackwell. Hi. Stand on the side. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Mary Blackwell. I'm Mary Blackwell. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear Bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America, the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Mary Blackwell. I, Mary Blackwell. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as a cemetery trustee. As a cemetery trustee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution. Of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Planning board, Mark Olson. Tracy Hi, Jean. Tracy came in today, so oh. 
flying solo tonight. All right, here we go. <laughs> I, Mark J. Olson. I, Mark J. Olson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Mark J. Olson. I, Mark J. Olson. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Sincerely. <laughs> Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the planning board. As a member of the planning board. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> <laughs> Counted up how many people you've sworn in? No. <laughs> no. I couldn't possibly keep track of that. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Budget Committee Brian Warburton and Mike Fluff. It's a race to the finish. <laughs> <laughs> Races are over with for a few years, <laughs> right? right? Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Brian Warburton. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly, solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. To the United States of America. In the state of New Hampshire. In the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I am Brian Warburton. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the budget committee. As a member of the budget committee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Just those two. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. The zoning board is Norma here. Okay, she's not here. Bill O'Brien called today and said he would not be able to make it. So. All right, so we are on to Hampton School District. And I don't see Kim Workman. Kim Workman's not here yet. Ellen Lavin, treasurer. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I should no. probably swear, get sworn in first as school district clerk before I swear, swear her in, right? <laughs> you can just stand there if you want. I can just do it. I just need okay. you to sign the document. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> just say it. I, Jane Cypher, do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance <laughs> to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof, so help me God. I, Jane Cypher, do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as school district clerk according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, so help me God. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I'll sign it. I'll it. Yeah, this is going to be. We need to hold it up. The paperwork's coming back with me anyway. Okay, Ellen, sorry about that. I just had a, Not a problem. lapse of memory there for a second. Okay, you can just do it now, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know my name. I, Ellen M. Lavin. I, Ellen M. Lavin. 
covenant. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Ellen M. Lavin. I, Ellen M. Lavin. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As school district treasurer. As school district treasurer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Frank DeLuca, school board. Peppa was in earlier today, so. Oh. <laughs> I hope I can do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Frank DeLuca. I, Frank DeLuca. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Frank DeLuca. I, Frank DeLuca. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the school board. As a member of the school board. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to Winnicott School District. Leslie LaFond and Catherine Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. The United States of America and the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I Catherine Antonio. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm. Swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the Winnipeg <coughs> School Board. As a member, as a member of the Winnipeg School Board. According to the best of my abilities. According, according to the, the best, best of my abilities. abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Two spots, please. Jane, you grade on penmanship? Yeah, right. What's that? You yeah. grade on penmanship? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, last but not least, Winnipeg Budget Committee, Jennifer Blankenship and Les Shepard. After me, I state your name. I, I Les Shepherd. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear, swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America. To the United States, States of America and the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So, so help me God. God. I state your name. I, I Les Shepherd. 
Do solemnly and sincerely. Do, Do solemnly, solemnly and, and sincerely. sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully, faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge, discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All, all the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the Winnicott Budget Committee. As a member of the Winnicott Budget, Budget Committee. Committee. According to the best of my abilities. According, according to the, the best, best of my abilities. abilities agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this Constitution. Of this Constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. <clears throat> Give people a minute to clear out if they want to so we then we'll start. Okay, it's 726. We're going to open a public hearing pursuant to RSA 41 14 A, Proceedings 8A Atlantic Avenue, Map 269, Lot 38 A, for the release of deed restriction number four, specifically the release of the will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. Second hearing. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this matter? Seeing none. Is the petitioner not here? No. Seeing none, we'll go to the board. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Nothing. I have a problem with the uh, very crowded nature of these lots at the beach. Uh, if this is a, uh, let's see, if this is the deck basically. I'm assuming that it still has some pervious surface underneath. It, it's just getting scary. The boundary lines are so close down there. Um, it's very, very congested on those small lots. It shows a setback from 7 feet to 4.6 feet. Those lots are only 50 feet. I just am getting concerned about the density down there and the additional building on those small lots. Is that all? No, well, that's it. But it's okay, we're going <laughs> to close the hearing at 728. Public comment. We're going to public comment. Anybody in the public wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, my name is Jay Tanzer. You want to wait until you get up yep. there and they can hear you, you, please. My name is Jay Tanzer. I live at 340 Lafayette Road. I'm a resident uh, of Hampton now, and I'm a registered voter. And uh, I just have one brief comment, well, second brief comment. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, second, a kind of a question. Do you know how many crossing walks there are between here and a stoplight in Northampton. Public comment, we don't. You don't do that. We don't answer back and forth. You just make a comment. I just make a comment. OK, fine. There are 11. How many are marked properly? Uh, None. Uh, How can you cross the road between here and Northampton without a, uh, comments on the road, without marking of the road or a light? Answer, none. How can you cross the road over here? None. You might take a look at what's going on with all the traffic control and so on and so forth. We'd like to have people cross the road where they can, 
but they can't because the snow piles there. The roads are not piled. The public crossing walks are not marked. The public crossing walks are not plowed. The sidewalks are not plowed. So we have 11 crossing walks for people with disabilities, none of which today are usable, and none of which today are suitable, and none of which are if properly marked. Wow. End of comment. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Seeing none. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple things. Um, okay. I met with uh, Brian Mills today from Aquarian, who's sort of their spokesman. I talk to him on a regular basis. And he would like me to make an announcement that Aquarian would like to reestablish the Citizen Advisory Committee. Uh, the company is hoping to expand ratepayer knowledge uh, through more elaborate communication <coughs> efforts. Now, they're looking for more people that perhaps don't have time to get heavily involved in the community. This would consist of going to quarterly meetings. So if any residents, business owners, any type of people, they're looking to get a uh, good base of maybe 12 to 15 new members to uh, start this committee up again. They're hoping to reach out to a representative part of the Hampton ratepayer community. Uh, the committee will have quarterly meetings and the company is hoping to start this next month. So if anyone's interested, please let any of the selectmen know. I mean, if you see any of us around. And um, I'm going to try to think of some people, too, and I think the assistant town manager is going to try to help come up with some people. But if anyone wants to volunteer or interest them to learn more about a water company that provides the drinking water, <coughs> uh, they're really hoping that they can uh, get this going within the next month or so. So I wanted to make that announcement. And I also have one more announcement to make to the board and to the community. Uh, the announcement is that I will be respectfully declining any nomination for chairman next week during the reorganization. Uh, I would hope that I will be able to continue as vice chair to support the appointed chairman in any way needed. The tasks that I would be willing to do are unlimited. I will do anything as to assist the chairman, but I feel at this time I do not want to take the title of chairmanship. I will continue to serve the community as I always have as the vice chair. And that's all I have, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you. No, uh, thank uh, Regina for bringing that up with the water company. I think uh, there's a lot of good that can come out of that. And I'll, I'll speak as the, uh, the reorganization. I, I think we should hold it off till next week when Rick can be here. Rick notified us last week of his uh, having to be away. And uh, it's not on a vacation. It's not on anything. It's medical. And uh, he's been an important part of this board for many years. And I think he should be here at the part when we have the reorganization. So. Um, if we need a motion, I'll make that as a motion. Well, since it's not on the agenda, as it usually is, it's, you're, you know, you're all automatically get your okay. wish, shall we say. Uh, I have a question, Regina, on the Water Advisory Council. That usually covers three towns. Did they say 12 residents from Hampton, or are they talking about 12 residents from all three towns? Well, I think they're looking for at least 12 to 15 people for all the community that they serve. But I would say the more the merrier. So if, well, if there's 12 people that are interested in Hampton, I mean, I'm a selectman for Hampton. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put it out there that if anyone was interested, I think that uh, it should be something that should be considered. You can reach out to any one of us, or you could probably even call Aquarian on your own if you wanted to. But they are just looking to uh, get more community involvement not necessarily elected or appointed officials, just everyday people that want to maybe get more involved in the community but don't have time to uh, run for an elected or appointed position. But Aquarian, stresses across, Aquarian stretches across the three communities, so it will likely be that there are Oh, yes, I'm sure that it will be the North Hampton and Rye as well, definitely. Okay. Um, uh, first, I want to commend uh, SAU 90. That was a very good meeting last Thursday night uh, on safety in the schools. I, as a parent, and uh, uh, my children all went to the local schools, I think it's pretty horrifying that we have to be teaching children to shelter in place and to hide and to group together and whatever. It's a pretty sad uh, commentary on our situation here uh, as as adults in this society. Um, if I may make a suggestion, 
before we do uh, the uh, appointments, it's my consideration that the minutes from the prior meeting should always be discussed and approved prior to getting into the current meeting. So we should be moving the minutes before we take up any business uh, starting with, say, appointments. Uh, I, don't, I don't see the logic to doing minutes part way through the meeting. That's just an observation, but I think we should be clearing the deck uh, before we go ahead and do anything else. Um, let's see, I have a few questions later, and I have some for our public works director. Okay, announcements of community calendar. I would just like to say I would like to thank Jane Cipher, the uh, town clerk, and Bob Casasa, the, the moderator, for running a great election. Thank everybody who came out in a storm to vote. And also, there is no way that, that they could change it. I mean, that, that's by the state, so that right. we, they had to hold it. They held it. One town did not hold it, and they've said it was illegal that they didn't do it, and they're now facing penalties, I guess. Uh, other than that, we can move on. And uh, if nobody uh, else on the board has any objections, we can move to approving the minutes prior to the appointments. Does anybody have any objections to that? No. No. Fred, is there any reason why we? No. It's a matter of board preference. OK. So let's do that then. We've got approval of the minutes on February 26, non-public session sealed minutes. Second. All in favor? Abstention? Abstain, yeah. March 5th, 2018. I'll move them. Second. All in favor? Abstention? Yeah. March 12th, 2018. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Abstention? <laughs> Very good. All right, we'll go to the consent agenda. Timber tax collection warrant. You need a motion on that, Mr. Chairman? Let's yes. Maybe you could explain. You, you do, sir. It is a formal assessment of taxes. So you do need a, a formal motion to approve the assessment. So this is timber that was cut in 2017. That is correct. And now we are supposed to collect the... Assess the, uh, the timber tax. Correct. Yes. I also move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? None. <coughs> Thank you. Appointment. Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jim Carr... ATC Group Services, Municipal oh. Landfill Monitoring Report. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, my initial contact was with Jim Carr, but this is uh, Steve Lowe uh, with the same firm. Um, I believe Steve's uh, intimately aware of uh, you know, the water quality results that um, the landfill uh, study uh, obtained for us. Uh, just as background, uh, we are required under our operational permit for the closed landfill to um, seek professional help to annually we do a, um, there's two reports, there's uh, this groundwater report, but there's also a landfill inspection report. Uh, part of the groundwater report also uh, requires us to notify certain individuals, mainly two people in Boston with the EPA and one specific resident. Uh, the Levitts, and uh, we we do that, and uh, I sign off that that's been Oops. done. I always send them back the copies of the letters to show uh, that it's been done, and I did bring six or seven extra copies. But the whole reason for being here tonight is um, new on the horizon or the agenda has been discussion about PFOAs, and in the past there's been questions about, you know, arsenic levels, are they natural, are they, you know, influenced by the, the landfill, things of that nature, and that's the reason why we I've invited them to uh, come and hopefully address some of those concerns to the board. With that, um, does the board have any questions? Do we want to open it up to an explanation, give sure, us a summary, a, a synopsis of, of what you've found? Sure. So um, as a result of the investigations that you've probably heard about over in the Merrimack area associated with the St. Cobain point where they found this class of compounds, PFAS, uh, per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, it's a mouthful, but uh, basically it's a classification of man-made chemicals 
that have been developed because of specific um, water resistance and stain repellent um, properties. And they're used in uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, a, a number of consumer products, stain resistance carpets. Um, they use it as uh, an aid in the, in the development of Teflon coated pans. And um, it's in a, a wide variety of household products, as it turns out, that most people would never con consider. You know, it's floss. Um, but uh, as a result of the findings in, out in uh, Merrimack, the state has basically asked all landfills and any hazardous waste sites to assess the potential for these compounds to be present at these other hazardous waste sites that are regulated by the state. And so all the landfills across the state that are currently regulated are, have been are in the process of being sampled over the last year and then this coming year. And Hampton was uh, proactive in getting the jump on it at the end of last year. And so we collected a round of samples from the monitoring well network that was there. And there's also uh, a private resident that's downgrading the Levitt well. Um, when we did this sampling, we did find in each of the wells levels of these, the PFOA, PFOS, uh, and um, they're variable. Um, they were found in uh, the northern portion, which is upgrading of the landfill relative to groundwater flow. So the groundwater flow goes from roughly um, northeast to southwest across the landfill. And so we have monitoring a well network that includes wells up gradient, cross gradient, and down gradient of the landfill. So the point of, or, or the significance of finding something in the up gradient well means it's, it's implied that it's, up, it's not being affected by the landfill, but it's there nonetheless. Um, having said that, there were some higher levels down gradient uh, on, on the down gradient side of the landfill. So it may indicate that there is some contribution from the landfill. Um, the state has established uh, an ambient groundwater quality standard um, that's used for comparison. Um, so they have a standard of 70 for the compound PFOA and PFOS, and the two of them combined. And uh, the upgrading well and many of the cross-gradient wells were below that standard. There were two wells on the landfill that were identified that were slightly above it. I think the high was 92 parts per trillion. So that compares to the standard of 70. If um, I could just interject, it's yeah. all, it is summarized under, on table 13, which is midway through this report. And if you would like, I mean, I also have a, a, a figure I can hand out that actually has those concentrations posted on if that would. Oh. Be, be helpful. Yep. So just by, so when you're looking at this figure, so MW1 in the upper left-hand corner, that's the up gradient well, and you can see it has a 42. concentration of PFOA of 12, PFOS yeah. of 10, and yeah. a total of 22. Then if you go down to the uh, bottom of the page, um, say in the center, MW7, it's just north of the building there. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. got a PFOA concentration of 22, PFOS of 70, and a total of 92. So, you know, that, so that's slightly above the standard of 70. And then you can see the, we have the um, Levitt well, which is just further to the bottom of the page there. Mm -hmm. It has a concentration of 66. Mm -hmm. And the important, th another important thing to note is that uh, all the landfill wells that we're monitoring, they're in the overburden, they're not in bedrock, whereas the Levitt well is a bedrock well. So oh, okay. it's not a direct comparison, but um, it's, it's relevant. Um, and for the record, the Levitt well is not a, uh, they do not rely on it as a drinking water source. Uh, it's only supposed to be used right. for watering your lawn right. and yeah. uh, cleaning the car. 
that's uh, they, they have had they have and have had uh, aquarium supplied water for a number of years. Are, are you finished? Um, I can go on, but uh, <laughs> okay, well, why don't we open up to questions? Yeah. because we'll start with with Regina. Sure. Um, so on these monitoring wells. This is just for the purpose of monitoring water from the land. Like, none of these are drinking wells or none going in into are, any type of. Right. They're strictly monitoring wells because um, things would leach out of the solid waste that we put in the landfill. And when you close a landfill like this, even though it has a rubber cap to it, a membrane that sheds water off, it is still at times in contact with what we call seasonal groundwater levels. Okay. Um, and as part of the closure plan, these were agreed upon with the state as part of the, the closure plan and were installed in, as part of the closure plan because uh, we ceased using the landfill in 94. So shortly thereafter, it was closed and these wells were drilled. So as far as what, where this water is going, Do we the groundwater? Yeah. So groundwater uh, basically sheds off the top of the landfill uh, to the southwest and south. Mm -hmm. All that, all the water that lands on top of the landfill, uh, mm -hmm. Steve's correct, is collected by uh, cutoff swales, drainage swales. It comes to two areas where you see in the right side of it where it says SW4. Those mm -hmm. words SW4 are actually on. Uh, a settlement area um, that's vegetated, uh, so all that water passes under Hard Arts Way, and then um, <coughs> I don't know if you can tell it, uh, there's actually a little pond right there where you enter the the, the inside gate of the uh, the public works compound. From there, all that water is discharged out into the marsh area. Um, but a lot of the monitoring well four, six, seven, three, and monitoring well two, those are all uh, ground, it's, it's ground transported water, i.e. it doesn't contact with the surface. Only SW3 on the left side is a, and you can see it's, it, it is in the surface waters. So where it's coming, how it's getting to a surface water sample from a deep sample, I, I don't know. I'm not a hydrogeologist. Right. The other one that concerned with me was PFOA7, which is a cross culvert under Tide Mill Road. As you can see, even standard water in a drainage ditch has PFOAs in it. So it goes to the word how ubiquitous it is. Ubiquitous. You know, it's <coughs> like uh, years ago we had to deal with MTBE after the EPA mandated to be put in all fuels. It helped uh, reduce lead in the atmosphere. And what they found is the MTBE got transported worldwide, even up in the Arctic. Um, and now it is it is ubiquitous chemical in all water supplies. Um, and this is another one. I think everyone in the industry was really surprised how this resilient this particular group of chemicals is and how long it actually stays in the in the I mean that yeah that's I mean to, to your point that's one of the reasons why they've they've been so uh, widely used in industry because they're so stable but that's also what makes them kind of bad environmentally is mm -hmm. they're very stable and they don't readily degrade right and they're very persistent I first became aware of these years ago when actually watching a TV program on health and they were talking about all these pans these especially the ones that are advertised as nonstick pans and they basically said if you use nonstick pans that chemical has gotten into your food and it is now in your bloodstream mm -hmm. period right. everybody's been exposed to it period now since then I'm cooking on a cast iron flat pan um, just for that particular reason um, but I'm sure that if my background blood work was done I'd still have it in my system totally exposed to it so um, it's yet I think I'll speak for myself and, and probably Steve I'm not the final chapter has not been written on this there's more to come as we gain more data 
I do want to express to the public while we are on camera that um, through F Fred and Jamie's concerns and, and former Selectman Bean, we did pull the trigger on this much earlier than the state and in a letter to uh, our consultant and say, please expand your sampling criteria, our, our categories to this particular chemical for all of our wells. I can also tell you that the states backed off and said, well, Chris, you really only need to <laughs> grab samples from, let's say, monitor well three and four. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at the actual letter. We continually, with Fred's guidance, have said, no, we're going to test everything we've always tested in the past to protect the residents in this community. So we've, we haven't reduced not only the chemicals that we're looking at, nor the locations, which the state would allow us but we've elected to take the more conservative approach and with the board's blessing, I believe. Rusty? Oh, you. No. I would just say so it's safe to say that the town has gone above and beyond what they need to in the same way that Aquarian is doing for us. Correct. Now. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much. Rusty? No, good report. I'm glad we're doing it. I want to continue doing it. We need to stay on top of it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mary Louise? Nothing like humans to poison their planet. Um, I have several questions. When it came time to dispose of the old dump, because that was the dump where everybody went and scrounged for stuff, uh, we on the Board of Selectmen decided that we would have to accelerate our efforts to close the dump, make it a landfill, because the price was going up. At the time this landfill was closed and covered, the feds did not require that you dig out the 32 acres of waste and put a liner underneath. Mm -hmm. So we, in fact, got away with piling up all the debris and covering it over. Um, long run, maybe that wasn't too smart, but then again, it cost us 4.5 million and it seemed like a sensible way to, uh, to deal with the issue at the time. In that dump landfill, there was everything, uh, including, and I, one nice gentleman who worked for a gas station locally stopped me one day and he said, you, you know, we used to fill up these big barrels with waste from the gas station. Mm -hmm. All the fluids and the leftovers and the oil and the stuff, that's all under there. So I'm sure at least some of it's going to leak. Um, what you have down here in the well, the southern end, because you've got water yep. down there. And all this <coughs> stuff is leaching itself down into the water table because the water's not going to stop. True. The water flow is not going to stop when it gets down there where it shows Levitt well, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that water's going to keep moving. Now, I have neighbors who are concerned because Little River Road is the first real high ground when you come up from the ocean. But the wells, well 7, which is the old well, and well 22, which has been drilled but is not in use, my neighbors are saying, we're worried about the flow, the direction of the flow from this landfill. Mm -hmm. It, is it, I mean, water's going to go where water goes. Would this potentially, maybe not in a year or two, but potentially be flowing in that direction and potentially causing problems for the existing Aquarian wells? Because that's there in the back. The well 22 right. and 7 are there's, down. There's a number of groundwater movements within the town. Right. Um, I don't believe, I know I haven't looked at it. I don't think Steve's looked at it to see if there's any connection or mm -hmm. 
because that is a concern. Right, but I'm sure we could ask either Aquarian or the state for their groundwater maps, bedrock Good idea. maps, Good idea. and compare ours to theirs and render an opinion back to the board mm -hmm. at a later date. But to, to hypothesize otherwise would be yeah. um, irresponsible for me. I, I appreciate the depth of the report. I will say that <laughs> this is easier for me to yeah. understand. And, and I appreciate that. A picture is worth a thousand words, and I appreciate that. But I have another area to ask you about, because I have your report from January 11th, 2016. We're sticking with this right now, because I'm I, I haven't, wait, wait, excuse me, I haven't talked yet on this report, so we're going to stick with this report it's, right now. This if is you're relevant. you're changing the sub subject, we're going to stay this on this. This is relevant. In to what this, aspect? This is relevant to this report about potential areas at the landfill that need to be corrected, uh, mm -hmm. people doing the ATVs, all this stuff, people coming in, possibly ripping the, uh, the cover. Uh, has that been addressed, and could that potentially be any um, cause of concern? Uh, has, this, has this report been addressed sufficiently so that I don't have to worry so much about uh, breaches in the cover of the landfill and anything that would increase the potential for contamination. Well, the, the, what we had noted there was... Um, That's your report, mm, yep. too. Correct. Yep. Uh, it was minor, minor superficial damage, and, um, you know, there are steps that, you know, the town has taken. They've uh, repaired some fencing and... Um, and there, you know, as part of the maintenance of any landfill, whether mm -hmm. it's by ATVs or sometimes it's grubs or sometimes it's just drought, yeah. you know, you do need to periodically um, address topical, surficial yeah. cover issues. But I don't think I'm um, taking a large leap to say that those sort of, what we're talking about, the nature of th this type of damage is not going to uh, materially affect contaminant transport at, from the landfill. Okay. And, and I guess the other thing I would add to your concern, you'd mentioned uh, prior about potential for drums and whatnot. You know, that's, uh, that potential is common to many old landfills. Yeah. But what I can tell you that's very good about the monitoring well network here is that um, volatile organics, which would compounds, which would be typical indicators of petroleum type mm -hmm. of contamination, yeah. are not, not present. Oh, so, good. so really, from that perspective, the contaminants that we're dealing with is some arsenic, mag manganese, and some of that's naturally occurring. Some of it may be a result of pH changes within the landfill, and uh, you know, from a health perspective, I mean, I know that you know there are some health associa issues associated with the arsenic issue, but you know, it uh, compared to say other landfills, you know, you don't have a huge plume coming out of here, the, you know, out of the conventional uh, contaminants. And we, d we did just discover some of the PFAS, mm -hmm. and that'll be, you know, this is our first round, and it will be something that, you know, will have to be monitored, and, you know, we don't know if these levels are representative, and that will come out over time. Um, so. It was my understanding when the landfill was closed that the monitoring would have to take place at specified intervals, I don't know if it was annually, but I'm assuming that we have been water quality is twice a year, and I believe gas and and, and, and the gas vents and the the structure of the landfill right. is four times a year. Right. So yes, we that does continue. To address your question, it was in last year's report that they noted uh, extensive ATV access to the to the landfill. I uh, we, we took steps to remedy that, um, found money within my budget, and basically from SW4 all the way down to what would be MW3 um, is now there's a six-foot high chain link fence. So no one Good. can get into the landfill with a mechanized Good. ATV. All we were told vehicles. if that cover was breached, we'd potentially have to dig the whole thing up, put a... Right. 
ground cover under and then replace well, it. We're not seeing any breaches. Um, okay. the, the ruts that they uh, did talk about are uh, in a line somewhere between monitoring on well one and two, mm -hmm. uh, actually caused by my own staff. Uh, didn't realize it was as, the ground was as saturated as it was. Tried to just go from point A to B in a direct path rather than uh, traversing all the way around the landfill. And we went back up and loamed and seeded those and regraded them, um, but they are still evident a little bit. Um, we did have some Queen Anne's lace that we dealt with a year or two ago. We overseeded, reseeded that whole area uh, and, and mowed it twice, and the Queen Anne's lace uh, subsided mm -hmm. dramatically. So, um, but uh, ATC has reminded us that. Um, yes, I have a gas vent that needs to be repaired, yeah. and uh, the mowing operations banged into one of the, okay. we use a piece of well tile. We cracked it and folded it in. Okay. Um, so those two things will be handled this summer. So you made your employees write 500 times, we will be careful of the landfill? Yes, they... Thank they, you, Chris. They did Thank you. The shortest path is not <laughs> the least uh, resistance. So yeah, we are actively aware, and every year we do take steps to yeah, I appreciate maintain that. the landfill. This is a good report. I mean, I read it; it's really good. I mean, and a lot of us are well aware of PFAS and dealing yep. with Aquarian with their wells and stuff, and talking oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm glad that we've got the monitoring wells, and we're staying on top of it, because as this decomposes or as things keep right. going down, mm -hmm. will there be more flow potentially? Could there be? I mean, I'm not asking you to. You know, it's the whole, um, you know, source of the PFAS in landfills is kind of new and kind of unknown, and it's going to be unique to each landfill and what was put in it mm -hmm. yep. and where in the vertical column of the landfill yep. was it deposited. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to predict, you know, uh, with any degree of certainty, you know, what the future trend is, and I think that's, you know, that's the point of the monitoring, so mm -hmm. that you you, and, you, and are, you keep an eye on it. And currently, if you have those wells there that are high, yep. that water is going into the marsh? Yes, no? Oh, all, sure. all groundwater, yeah. I would think, eventually is making the marsh. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so, excuse me, I'm listening to these guys, Mary Louise, if you don't mind. So, and that's getting diluted in the marsh, that's getting... It's getting looting the marsh. That's bothering wildlife being, in the marsh. Well, it's being some of it's being broken down and attenuated. Some of it's being yeah. absorbed by the plant life. Some of it, uh, um, there's a host of things that would go on. Um, typically, mar this type of marsh and all upland wetland marshes are great purifiers of water. Um, they do for us or for society what in some respects we can't do and um, that's why you know these the grass swales and and in the ones lined with vegetation they do a great job at, at binding up uh, these things um, binding them up and, and breaking them down over time yeah. um, but I I'm nowhere a chemist to tell you how long it takes or, or to what benefit it would take but hydraulically that groundwater model to model that we have and it's verified by the elevations of the wells. We compare them to each other. Is traveling from where you enter Hard Arts Way down to basically the entrance of the, the transfer station. And I would presume, barring any other geological formation, that they continue to flow that way, which directly will put them into the marsh. How long they take to go through that is, well, in digging in the marsh, it's, it's, it's a whole different biosphere, if you will, uh, you know, the, the, it's, it's like a huge active sponge that is far more biologically active than <coughs> any of the upland areas. So I don't, but I won't hypothesize any okay. further on what's going on. Thank you very much for your report. Okay. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate what you're doing. And please keep us informed. informed. I'm sure everybody so wants. We have a new bid. Uh, um, ATC Group has been our vendor for the last six years that I've been here. Um, we do have a new bid that we're going to we're required every three years to put it out to bid. Uh, that gets opened, I believe, Thursday afternoon. Um, 
will either be working with ATC or an equally competent um, firm. But uh, this is mandated by the state and the EPA indirectly. We'll continue to do it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, just real quick. Chris bid for what? Landfill monitoring services. Okay. Because anything over $15,000 in the combination yeah. of the actual physical work the report writing and the lab analysis puts it okay. over 15 annually. So we will uh, continue to, uh, pursuant to the town's purchasing policies, uh, put this out to bid every two years. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Thank Anybody you. has anything else? And if you have any other questions, uh, if they come up later, or if uh, Selectman Griffin has them, uh, mm -hmm. pass them on to the manager. I will pass them on, and we'll definitely get you some answers. Will do. Thank you very much. Any, Thank you any Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Now, manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the last day to apply for a recount for warrant articles is March 20th, 2018. That's tomorrow. Uh, town clerk's office is, is open until 5 p.m. The last day to submit applications for veterans, elderly, blind, and disability exemptions and for the Hampton Beach property tax exemption is April 16th. That's a Monday. It's normally the 15th, but it falls on a Sunday, so it's extended one day. Please see the assessor's office for the required forms. There are extensive forms that need to be filled out uh, in order to apply for the exemption under the statute. Town meeting approved an all-service veterans tax credit. If you are not now receiving a veterans tax credit and have served in the armed forces of the United States for not less than 90 days on regular active duty, you should visit the assessor's office, complete the necessary forms, and return them not later than April 16, 2018. You will be required to provide a copy of your DD-214 with the completed forms. Sometimes they're difficult to find, so I'm mentioning it now. We'd like everybody to, that applies to, to get those forms in properly. Town and school reports are available upstairs in the town office in the front lobby. Please come and take some. We have a few left over, <laughs> and we'd like to make sure that everybody in town gets one that needs one. The uh, police department has announced that they are in the process of taking applications for part-time police officers. They'll be testing on April 7th. Those selected will attend the academy in August and November 2018, and then work in the summer of 2019. Please call the police department for complete details. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully that, that doesn't lose itself tonight. Um, I did give the, the board a report on the shoreline erosion at Bicentennial and Stimson Parks. Uh, I just want to make the notation that uh, some time ago, uh, the board was asked and approved to install large stones be in front of the uh, existing seawall. Mm -hmm. um, we have a report saying that uh, it was a good idea because if they had not been there, that seawall probably would have failed. Mm -hmm. We don't know for sure, but it, it took heavy damage in this particular storm. In fact, some of the coating on the wall has been stripped right off, some of the concrete. Um, there was a, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times in the past, a, a huge freshet back in the uh, early 1700s that in fact blew out this whole section of the North Beach and all of what is now High Street and filled, filled up what is now Meadow Pond. So we certainly don't want to repeat that. <laughs> that would be quite a traumatic event. But uh, the, the material held. Uh, we have a lot of cleanup work to do, but things are in relatively good shape up there. Thank Super. you, Mr. Chairman. Regina. Um, Mr. Town Manager, I have a question. I, we, it looks like you sent out a letter dated today for the administration of parking lots? Yes. I did. Yep. Um, Trust it to the board. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say that it looks like we're going to, so for the summer of 2018, what would be the... Uh, we're, we're not changing personnel or anything like right, that. Exactly. We're just changing the modus operandi and which, how we collect, and mm -hmm. we're, we're going to try to set up a system so that we could collect without having people handling money and checks and all those sorts of things that normally happen in these sorts of situations. Um, we would like to look at um, purchasing, if town meeting approves, uh, the type of uh, units that the state uses at the beach or the city of Portsmouth uses and several other cities and towns in the area use to take in cash 
we have a lot of activities that go on after school starts and we don't have right. personnel to man the lots so we lose a lot of money if we had these particular facilities there and we really have to spend some time looking at this and analyzing it and bringing information back to the board um, then we we would be able to bring I hope an article to town meeting that makes sense and have the town fund the necessary expenses um, perhaps some surplus perhaps some appropriation depends on how the board feels about that to keep these lots open more lo or longer so we can in fact make more money in our enterprise that we're actually operating which means we can defray more taxes as we go along um, one of the things we'd like to do at least for this year but we're trying to get things organized is to uh, because of the, the cash that we're handling uh, the, the auditors have on several occasions criticized the town for the method in which we handle the cash I understand the auditors uh, situation and their complaints and they look at things like uh, the way other cities and towns do this and we do it differently uh, so we'd like to streamline <coughs> that so that we're actually running everything into the police department which is right next door and in and, and locked bags and then it's taken to the bank uh, and the bank takes care of the auditing for us and the assessing for us and accounting for us and the processing and crediting for us which saves a lot of time and trouble um, and and sort of assures the the auditors that we're doing it right and we have control over it not that anybody's doing anything wrong Correct. it's just that the auditors would like to have a better system and they've complained yeah. several times about yeah. it so this, we're not going to get rid of any employees we're not going to do that we're just going to try to change the system and monitor it see how well it works and whether or not it's a good process this is only for one year and that's all we're going to do it for is one year we're asking the police department to give us assistance during that year and it will be minimal assistance because we already have some very good people working for us down there do you need a motion or anything on that or uh I'm, d I'm sort of requesting that the board uh, say that they have no objection to doing it um we need to in fact we need to look at closer what we're doing we need to Definitely. protect our employees Definitely. we need to protect the people who are using the facilities mm -hmm. and we lead, need to optimize the amount of money we put in the Treasury yes those are three very important things okay. so I yes I, I would like the board's permission to go ahead and do that I think it's a grand idea I'll make a motion for, for one year we go with this recommendation until we can find out how we can straighten it out for the one year a second any discussion well I was just going to say I'd like to see a stipulation that we're looking toward perhaps um, funding this and getting the machinery and so forth that this we have a goal in doing this study well, I think we we I do and it's in the memorandum that right. the intention is to bring an article forward to town meeting at the right. selectmen approve it but I think that should be incorporated in the motion that's, that's fine well not that's everybody's going to have okay this, that's, that's true. fine I mean I brought it up last year yeah mm -hmm. before uh, the before the election that we were gonna that this year we needed to talk about it and so I think that's this is what's bringing yeah. that forward True. yeah and you know you look at every town around us you look at every town I don't know many towns that have collections yeah. you know they all go to the automated and stuff and I think it's it's just far better so okay yeah. that's my in favor motion. opposed unanimous yeah. thank you uh, any other questions Regina Rusty mm -hmm. nope I'm all set Mary Louise ah. I see that the state has asked for the town's lawsuit to, to be put off until or start uh, May 1st rather than April 1st. And the board did consent to that. Yeah. But that was, thank you for that information. Um, when you and I spoke a couple of days ago, you mentioned something about your. Um, effort at incorporating or um, fine-tuning the ethics section of the code of ordinances um, is that complete do you need a motion on it what the board where? the board did complete the effort and it is completed uh, uh, it will we're, we're about to send all the amendments that have been done to the ordinances out to the vendor to have that printed Excellent. Christina already has it in writing good and I believe she already has it on the website so uh, we're going to be very diligent about pursuing that and getting it so everybody understands what it is and how it works uh, and and it protects the town at this point yes excellent that's very very good oh. um, non-union oh. pay raises that's 
in the past, oh, here we have one. in the past, yeah. um, selectmen were concerned about pay raises for non-union employees, um, not counting elected officials, just right. regular non-union employees. Um, the deal was when we started that that the union contracts start on April 1st of a given year right. and expire on March 31st of another given year. So it seemed logical setting up the non-union pay raises that they would commence after the annual election on April 1st, um, predicated basically on the cost of living, which finance told me a couple of days ago in their uh, understanding is about 2% this year. Um, the board last year was very, very late in figuring out the non-union raises. And I believe that we should use the target date of April 1st, but we should make sure that we take care of any decision related to the non-union raises in the month of April, mm -hmm. no later than that. <coughs> And I thank you for your, your work on that. Um, <laughs> lapel pins. Fred, you mentioned that a couple of days ago. And I remember the um, problems after the Board of Selectmen several years back gave out plastic mm -hmm. pins of recognition. Uh, that's an insult to our um, employees. And we will have quite a number of employees leaving. What I would suggest is that we either get an engraved plaque for an employee who's leaving or a fine, nicely framed certificate. And depending or not on the board's wishes, even possibly a, a certificate uh, to LeMay's or Galley Hatch or someplace is a little recognition. And when individuals are retiring, from service to the town, they should be brought in here close to or just after the date that they have stepped aside so they can get public recognition from the board. And I feel very strongly about that. Um, just, we just, just in fact did that finished with that. everybody who, who retired. Yeah, Teresa fact, McGinnis retired at the end of August and, and Mr. McKinnon retired in, oh, at the end of July. And someone sent a reminder <clears throat> to recognize the employees. Um, so I would, I would just throw the lapel pins away if the board agrees. And uh, I have a couple of other comments that I will do under uh, yeah, I, closing I, comments. But thank you, Fred, for that. Fred, I have three questions. Sure. One, Kravitz article. Yes. On having it on the Warren article, all mm -hmm. the non-union raises. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that legally binding? Has Mark looked into that? He has. It violates RSA 37 colon 6. Okay. Do you want to just briefly The say statute that is? provides that there shall be an appropriation for money to be spent. Every year the selectmen uh, make that appropriation for all non-union employees and it goes into an, an account held by the finance department. Uh, it is approved as part of the budget and is approved during the public hearings by the budget committee. The selectmen also approve it during their hearings. Uh, that's where the money comes from to pay the non-union employees. Yeah. The statute, although we don't do it this way in, in Hampton, the statute specifically says that the town manager is the only person that can approve raises or salaries for town employees. <laughs> and what I do is I ask the selectmen <laughs> to do that function because I think that's the way the system should function. Is this the, we go through the appropriation phase, there's money available, and the selectmen make a decision on how much those raises will be. Uh, after they have uh, thought, thought through the process and seen how many employees there are, we actually provide a flow chart of where the money is and how it could be expended in different, different, different ways. And the board has opted to do that. That's how we operate the system, but the statute specifically does not allow what's in that warrant article. Okay, so it does not, so that is a non-binding warrant article. It's an advisory warrant article. Advisory warning article, okay. The other one is the article on smoking on the beach. Well, I know there is a legal decision <laughs> on that. 
<laughs> Actually, no, but there is a, a statute that governs smoking in public places, mm -hmm. but only where it affects its, its enclosed public spaces. For instance, if you had two employees uh, and they were in a motor vehicle and one of them was smoking and the other said, no, I don't want you to smoke, you can't smoke. <coughs> in fact, we have a regulation that says you can't smoke in our vehicles. Um, on a public beach, it's, there's no, it's no different than smoking on a street. Uh, it's very difficult to enforce unless somebody complains and they have to sign a complaint and go to court. That's almost impossible. The statute does not cover the depth of the, uh, the article. Right, right. That's it's advisory. It's advisory. Okay, because I, you know, I just don't want the police being tied down with a million people this summer saying, hey, somebody's smoking on the beach. You know, if, if you really want to get at the smoking, uh, and, and we've already done this. I don't. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, if, if somebody really wants to get at it, there is a, an ordinance that prohibits the dropping of cigarette butts on the ground. Excellent. It's, 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 it's litter. Yeah. And, and, and if somebody wishes to make that complaint and file a report with the court, then they can do that. But that's, I think, as far as we can go. Okay, good. The one other question I had was there was, there was a Warren article, not this year, but the year before, on the study of downtown the $350,000, yes. what's the, the status of that study? The article expires on the 31st day of this month. Uh, we have done the, uh, and that means that we can't issue a contract after that date. April 1st is a, is a dead, drop dead date. Mm -hmm. uh, we have issued a contract and we have the information from our electric utility company on what it would cost to do this. Uh, we have a proposal from our telecommunications company, a telephone company, uh, to spend $5,000, that, that contract is pending, and, and we have yet to hear from our cable company, surprisingly not, uh, simply because they may not be interested. Uh, but we will have the telephone company uh, do their survey because that's what the article requires us to do, <coughs> and we will then combine those figures, and we are chasing the cable company, by the way. Uh, and, and we've got, I've got several people chasing them, so I'm, I'm sure that they're going to have to run fast and hard for the folks who are chasing them. Uh, we'll try to have that one done by the 31st as well and get a complete picture to the board of what those costs and expenses were that were contained within the warrant article. Okay. Thank so you very much. can we Close. tell the, uh, the cable company that if uh, they don't get their thing in, then if and when the wires get moved, they can pay for it themselves? They can. Uh, there's a little tweak in the statutes, I think it's RSA 236, that basically says if the Board of Selectmen votes to remove poles and wires and so forth, they have to do it within a certain number of days or the town's free to cut the poles down. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but can that's... We, can we remind them of that? Uh, we have sort of gently nudged them in that direction. So uh, that we can get this done, you know, it was yes. a war knuckle, it was done now yep. two warrants ago. Yep. And, uh, we need to get that done. Yeah, we need to finish it, and we are putting a lot of pressure on them to get that done. So I'm hoping that by the 31st of this month, we'll have two contracts out. We'll be able to finish that work up in short order and get get on with it. Okay. Thank you. It's probably about a $10,000 expense. Right. Uh, so. Old business? Um, I have something. I just want to bring it up mostly because, as you can see, the town of Hampton has been quite uh, transparent and having our landfill tested and getting the results immediately to uh, the public to inform them of what's going on. I'm sure there's plenty of other closed landfills in New Hampshire that we still don't know anything that's going on with them, correct? Sure. And then, of course, we got Coakley. Yeah. And uh, the paper on Friday said that some of our state representatives, our Representative Mesmer, Representative Bean, uh, Lenny Cushing, <coughs> the former assistant mayor of Portsmouth, has uh, filed a lawsuit in regards to the right to know request that they serve to Coakley Landfill Group. I think the end of January they served it in care of the uh, Portsmouth's, uh, Portsmouth's attorney. And I just want to say that regardless of what happens with, I know uh, Mindy Mesmer has worked on a slew of bills to try to get this transparency to uh, get through legislatively, and she's still working on that. And they have filed the suit, but regardless of that, I just want to say that, you know, we have one little landfill here in Hampton that's not even a super fun site. And we tested it when we didn't have to, 
and we immediately released the details of it when we didn't have to. And um, the argument with Coakley, me looking at it from outside, is that 63% um, of their funding comes from municipalities. And uh, Portsmouth is almost 54% of that. And I, of course, we know that Portsmouth has made some comments against the uh, Hampton Board, which I was totally uncalled for because I don't think we were simply trying to set out a, a letter of communication between two elected officials and it was elected bodies and it was totally construed as something else. And I was very disappointed to hear that. But regardless of what Coakley Landfill Group is supposed to be, 63% of their funding comes from municipalities and $13 million of Portsmouth taxpayer money is not accounted for. So regardless of anything else, that is a reason for the suit, and that is a reason for them to become transparent. And I just wanted to state that tonight. Thank you. Trustee? Nope. Very good. Louise? Yeah, I have several items. Uh, first, I thank the public for uh, passing the town forest vote. Uh, I really appreciate that. I hope that <coughs> any type of shooting activity in the town forest will be vigorously enforced. Um, let's see, Smutty Nose, I was delighted to see that um, Smutty Nose is being uh, purchased by um, the uh, Peter Fuller's uh, company out, up in Northampton. And I do wish that, I know we want to keep the employees there working, but I hope that that pretreatment situation is resolved in a fairly fast manner. And will we at some point in time, Fred, discuss the, uh, the, the fee, um, the industrial surcharge fee? They that are, is referenced in Wright Pierce. They are going to have to come in and, and file for an industrial discharge permit. And at right. that time, we are going to assess them a uh, <coughs> fee, which I'm sure they won't like, but we're going to assess right, it. Right, because we owe to the taxpayers who are paying for the treatment plant, and God knows we've got enough trouble um, keeping that up to date. Um, let's see. Yeah, and my final thought... Uh, and I'm still under new business, right? You're under old business. I'm under old business. Okay, I apologize. Uh, under old business, I want to propose uh, a motion to the board. Um, I move that all of our departments and committees be advised that they are not allowed to hire any sitting selectman for paid employment of any kind unless pre-authorized by a public vote of the Board of Selectmen. Was that already done in the amendment, in the ordinances? Yes, it was. So it's already in done. In fact, it's forbidden. The vote can't even be taken. Yeah, okay. okay. In the how, Fred? The, no, the, the prohibition is complete. All elected officials of the town right. cannot work for the community. But when did that... What I'm trying to get at is when I'd have to get you the date, but it was it was um, months ago. It's it's not funny when you look in your town report. It's, sorry, that's right. I I, I, I can la I'm laughing at a personal joke. I, it's that I thought five hundred and fifty-five dollars uh, paid out to a sitting selectman, which I have never seen happen in all my days, and I I go back a long time around it's old here. news we moved on it's been it's been dealt with if you want to keep harping on it you can you've got a motion on the floor do i have a site well there, there's no motion because there's nothing to be done okay well as fred says so anything else you have if fred says that it's been taken care of then i will take his word very for good it. anything else no not until we get to new business thank you uh new business anybody routine you have anything under new business um, no, I'm good right now. Thank you. Nothing at this time. Mary Louise? Yes. Last year, I was rather appalled 
when the chairman told the members of the Board of Selectmen that it being the last Monday in April, the board's summer schedule would commence the following Monday, which in fact was the first Monday in May. You went with every other week and you included the holidays uh, until approximately Labor Day. We are here to work. I object to taking all that time off and if you did that in 2018, we would lose 17 Mondays if you count in the holidays that fall on Monday. That is too much time for this board to sit back and not get work done. So I strongly suggest, in fact, I will so move, that if we are inclined to take any uh, days off in summer, that that should be only the Mondays, uh, not counting the uh, 4th of July holiday, just in July. So if we take off two days or three days at the most, I don't have a calendar in front of me, we need to be sitting in here working. We've got too much to do to be taking all those days off. Actually, I, I consider that dereliction of duty. Okay, so what, what, number one, the chairman didn't make that decision. That was a decision made by the board. Well, whatever it That's was, fine. it was a foolish fine. decision. That's fine. Uh, you've got a motion. And you lost a lot of time. You made a motion. I don't see a second, so the motion's dead. Well, I'm going to be very disappointed in this board if we don't work more. Okay. Uh, I actually have one thing I want to bring up, if yes. I may. Um, this following Monday, I want to tell the board because it will be before we meet again. I'm going to be joining uh, Representative Bean, Representative Mesmer, and all the people that are in the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission. I'm going to go to that meeting up in Concord. And while I'm up there, I'm also going to see if I can find out some more information on uh, House Bill 1802, which is a statewide education property tax. Uh, House Bill 1673, interest rate on delinquent property taxes. And 1381 utility valuation who mm -hmm. the utility valuation when I think Mr. Town Manager is going to, would cost us how much? About a half a million? It cost us $550,000 in year one. It will go up from there. And uh, the statewide education property tax just to let you know apparently they think that they want to come up with some bills similar to the way they come up with bills for the town for our school system. Last year the school saved approximately over $660 thousand dollars which generally what happens to that money that doesn't get used it, it stays here it stays here right well they want to have a bill that will uh, make it go toward the state general <laughs> fund and uh, so we're gonna not get taxed on it once but twice yeah. so I met with Kathleen Murphy this morning and I Good. plan on spending some time up in Concord to uh, gather information a lot more I think we got some really great reps up there right now I want to participate in their process as a strict selectman just to be communication so I can make, come back mm -hmm. and make my argument to the board and see what they have to say about it. That's the main reasoning for me not taking the title of chairman because I feel like that could maybe, you know, cause some issues. So I just wanted to say that I'm going to be going up for the cancer cluster meeting, but I'm hoping to maybe uh, connect with some more people while I'm up there. Did you say it's next Monday night or? It's Monday at 9 a.m. So, so you'll be here Monday I'll be, night. Yeah, though. but I just wanted to let yeah, you know ahead yeah, of time. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, thank you. Very good. I just want to bring up, I, I should have done it under old business, I guess. The bill for the uh, Rockingham planning. It's in the budget. It's in the budget. It's so in the budget. All, so we don't have to make any motion or anything. No, sir, it's already included in the budget. Give it to you. Okay. All, all right. Good. Oh, what about the part-time building and rental housing? We need to do that in non-public because it's a personal okay. matter. Okay. All right, so. Good. Rusty. I'll make a motion. We're going to non-public under RSA 91A. Colon two, uh, 91A colon three, Roman two, sections A and B. <laughs> so moved. Okay, roll call. Aye. Boom, Aye. boom, boom, boom. Okay, thank you. We're thank, thank you, you. Channel.